On tonight's show, Susie gets to spend all day in bed with some gadgets. I'll be finding out why Wi-Fi is such a big deal. And Adrian discovers if the iPod deserves to be the gadget icon of the decade. We're on the cusp of a robot revolution. The first happened in the 60s when robots revolutionised manufacturing. The second is going to revolutionise your home. The University of Tokyo reckon that in just 20 years' time, robots will be more important than cars. No wonder then that Honda is hedging its bets with Asimo, one of the most advanced walking robots in the world. Top speed is one mile an hour, but Asimo is a major breakthrough because he can balance and climb steps. Which means one day robots will be able to A, do chores upstairs, and B, escape Daleks. Sony have their own miniature humanoid, the all-singing, all-dancing Curio. One day you'll sit by your computer and offer help when you get stuck. The American development of robots is more concerned with, well, offering help when you want to invade somewhere. The US Defense Department recently offered $1 million to anyone who could build a robot that could cross the desert. Okay, we have a bot on its side. Nobody managed it, so next year they're offering $2 million. It's thought a robot soldier attached to a Segway might be the best solution. Good try, guys. I'm afraid, though, the UK's interest and investment in robots is lagging well behind the rest of the world. But <clears throat> that should change soon. Just as word processors made computers essential, experts are searching for the one thing that will make a robot indispensable around the home. And for me, that would mean being able to stay in bed. And with the help of a few other gadgets, I'm going to see how close to that vision of the future we already are. Join us later to see if the rise of the machines lets me have a duvet day. And you'll have the chance to win everything I use. This year's gadgeteers are reciting but one mantra. I think, therefore, iPod. And what's an iPod? It's an MP3 player made by Apple. And what's an MP3? Well, it's a way of compressing music and means the iPod can store 10,000 songs on its 40 gigabyte hard drive. The iPod is by far the best-selling MP3 player in the world. But is the iPod just an expensive fashion accessory? Is it actually any good? And if you're thinking about buying an MP3 player, is this the one you should go for? Well, before you fork out up to £400, let me reveal the iPod's downsides. Firstly, there are question marks over the battery life, and muggers are now on the lookout for those white earphones, the signal you've got a pocket worth picking. Frankly, you're better off without them. They're really tinny anyway. Another letdown is the lack of a recording input, so you can't record directly from a hi-fi. Everything has to come via a computer. So you see, contrary to popular belief, the iPod isn't perfect. But what about its many rivals? Are they any better? It's going to take something a bit special to knock the apple out of its tree. And in our opinion, there are only a few contenders out there for the iPod's crown. The Rio Karma is a 20 gigabyte jukebox that comes with the distinction of being compatible with WMA. Now don't panic, that's the Windows Music format. It means you can download cheaper music from the Napster site. At £240 it's cheaper than the equivalent iPod and comes with double the battery life, plus a very good quality pair of Sennheiser earphones. Unfortunately, it looks like a big ugly pager. Kirsty McCall, hippie. The Philips HDD120 is not bad looking and has a line in port for recording direct off your CD player. It's loaded with useful features and again has a much better battery life than the iPod. At £350, this Creative Zen Extra isn't exactly stylish, but it's cheaper than the most expensive iPod and it's got the largest capacity of any player on the market. This thing can hold 16,000 different songs. That's more songs than have ever been in the top 10. The simply named Panasonic CD SL CT810 is not an MP3 player, but it will play CDs encoded from most music formats, so you can download music to your computer and burn one CD with up to 200 MP3 quality songs on it. This thing's trump card is a battery life verging on 100 hours. So, if you're not already feeling seduced by the glow of a shiny new iPod, 
then there are credible alternatives out there. But really, once you get past the way things look, doesn't it all boil down to how easy they are to use? Well, we think so. Now, I've downloaded all the music from this CD onto the computer. What I want to see is how quickly I can get that music from the computer onto our MP3 players and listen to track 11, our gadget show theme tune. Unfortunately, we've had a non-starter. This is the Creative Zen Extra. It's the one the manufacturer sent us and it just won't work. It's been well reviewed elsewhere, but frankly, we're not that impressed. So, four contenders left. Let's rock and roll. Ready, go. The Rio Karma and Philips HDD120 download straight from the Windows Media Player on your computer via their own software. All you do is plug in your MP3 and press update. The iPod's pretty much the same, except it works direct from iTunes software, and once plugged in, it downloads anything you haven't already got on your iPod automatically. For the Panasonic, you need to burn a CD, so there's no connection. Just a long wait as the computer does the burning. The iPod's way ahead all the way through the process, and I'm listening to the track I want after just 50 seconds. The Rio Karma's fast to download, but the controls on it are so fiddly and sensitive that I just can't get it to select the track I want. In the meantime, the Philips finishes the job in 1 minute and 25 seconds. I finally get the Rio to do what I want it to and hear the track after 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Having to burn a CD for the Panasonic is not a quick job and it's almost 5 and a half minutes before it's done. Well, it seems the iPod deserves its place at the top of the tree and there's no sign of its dominance letting up either because very soon this will be in the shops. It's the iPod Mini, its little sister. It's half the size and it can store up to 1,000 songs. It should have been launched here in April, but demand for it in the States has been so massive that they can't even keep that market fully supplied, let alone ship the things abroad. In fact, demand is so great for the iPod Mini over here already, these things are changing hands on the internet for well over the odds. If you thought the iPod was a success, I've got a feeling you ain't seen nothing yet. We're investigating if gadgets can let you stay in bed all day. It's 7.02 a.m. Keeping entertained and informed is obviously not a problem. I can even go shopping, socialise and do some work, thanks to the internet. But to really make my time as productive as possible, I really need some help on the ground. According to the United Nations World Robotics Survey, there are 770,000 robots in the world, but we've only got time to test three of them. Meet number one, Robo Sapien. He's an extraordinary piece of technology and able to walk like the big bucks bots we saw earlier. And yet, Robo Sapien costs just £80. He was invented by Mark Tilden, who is a NASA physicist and one of the pioneers of these so called biomorphic robots. Now, I can control it steady by simply using this remote. It has got about 70 different functions. And because my feet are cold... Oh, I'm going to ask it to go and get my socks. This could take some time. Unfortunately, he isn't quite efficient enough to become a butler just yet. But he is definitely a sign of things to come. And as the first commercially available walking robot... Come on, bulldozer. We reckon Robo Sapien's a collector's item waiting to happen. Right, this is it. He's going to get it this time. Oh! Yes! 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 Come on! Stop! Oh! Thank you! My feet are warm now, anyway. Robot number two is Sony's Ibo. This is the third generation and costs £1,500. He's packed full of artificial intelligence and he's mastered the kind of tricks every useful robot will need. Right, watch this, because I've put him on his side and he doesn't like it. He's registering that he's helpless and he's stuck. And he just flattens himself out and gets back up again. Isn't that terrific? That is fantastic. I'm going to give him a little pat for that. Well done, good boy. Good boy. Owner registration. I'm going to register my owner's name, face and voice. I've registered your voice. 
Next, I'll register your face. I have a camera in my nose. Please position your face in front of the camera so I can see you. I see your face. Because Ibo is Wi-Fi, I can email him to, say, take a picture of downstairs, which I could then view online. Trouble is, sit. when you're playing, he doesn't always shake hands, walk around, or sit down when sit you down. tell him to. You know that it can do all of the commands, but it won't do them always to order, which does make it a little bit frustrating. Now, I certainly say that that's part of the artificial intelligence and that it's got a mind of its own. You have to train it like a normal puppy, but it can get a little bit annoying. And as a toy, mm, it's pretty frustrating, although it is very sweet, aren't you? Yes, you are. Ibo is a great signpost to the future, but he's not yet an everyday tool that makes staying in bed easier. Which is where the Electrolux Trilobite comes in, a £1,000 robot vacuum cleaner. This is incredibly sophisticated, using technology derived from cars, submarines, missiles and bats. The Trilobite sends out sonar waves from gold-plated components for the best performance, naturally. Nine microphones inside listen back to the echoes so it can work out where our sound man's feet are and to try to avoid them. The sonar helps establish the perimeter, then the trilobite calculates the fastest route to clean the room. Magnetic strips along the top of the stairs create a virtual barrier, and when it's all done, it heads back to base to recharge. It does seem to miss the edges though, but the idea is to use it every day so that dust never gets a chance to build up. This really is the sort of robot that's going to be massive in years to come. Something that needs no human intervention, just looks after itself. Although, presumably, we're all going to have very dirty stairs. Join us in a moment to see the gadgets I'll use for the final part of my day in bed. Ow! This is just quite frankly painful. Ow! Here's a good one. What's just been installed in Estonian pubs allows Nepalese yak farmers to swap tips, would enable me to send you an email from a beach on Mauritius and was called Explosive by Bill Gates. I'll tell you what, wireless fidelity or Wi-Fi and you really, really need to know about it. In two years, Wi-Fi will be a billion dollar industry. It's a way of connecting to the internet without using any wires. Fortunately, it's also cheap and easy to install. Now, I'm going to assume that you already got one of these. This is a broadband connection. Ordinarily, you'd pop this in the back of your computer, but this time, we're going to plug it into the back of one of these, a wireless router. It costs about £80 and transmits the internet around your house. You'll also need to modify your computer. Oh, if you've got a great big desktop like this, you'll need to install a £10 card. That slots in there. You can see this whacking great aerial. And now, I'm connected to the internet. If you've got a laptop, then your version of that whack and great aerial is this. It's called a PCM CIA card, and it fits in this slot. But some laptops don't have those slots, um, and so you'd need to choose something like this, a USB dongle. Again, slot it in. I should now be connected to the internet without any wires, simply through the magic of radio waves. And because, as we know, radio waves can go through walls, I can now sit and surf in the room next door. Or check your emails in bed. Darling? Or play online games in the garden, or indeed anywhere within a 30 metre radius of your router. Go on, get in! Wi-Fi hotspots aren't only for the house either. They're popping up in restaurants, coffee shops, and even trains. I've got no wires, completely wireless. Just take your Wi-Fi laptop along, completely wireless connection. Pay on average about five pounds an hour. It's completely wireless, you know, the whole thing is completely wireless. And surf. The connections are fast. No wires, no wires. And cheaper than using GPRS or 3G. Hi oh guys, Wi-Fi, wi yeah? Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. Mind you, it's not just computers that you can enable with Wi-Fi. I have here a Wi-Fi Hi-Fi, it connects to internet radio stations. And I put it in the kitchen. 
Okay, this isn't revolutionary, but a couple of Wi-Fi applications really are. Here in London's fashionable Soho Square, there are five Wi-Fi CCTV cameras, beaming pictures of juvenile delinquents and TV presenters back to the old bill. It's much cheaper than running cables. In Cambodia, they have something called the Motoman Project. Wi-Fi equipment is strapped to the back of a moped, forming a mobile hotspot. The moto men then drive out into the sticks doing laps of hospitals and schools, enabling the people inside to send and receive emails. Where previously the internet was just a pipe dream. But Wi-Fi has a dark side. The problem is security. It's estimated 50% of wireless hotspots have no security controls at all. Round about page two of your router's manual, you'll find a section about password protection. It's very important that you read it because if you don't choose to password protect, people like me can wander into your hotspot and connect. There you go, I'm surfing the internet and they're paying. Cyber mischief makers mark unprotected hotspots with this symbol, so others can take advantage of the free access. It's called war chalking. And when you're detecting Wi-Fi on the move, it's war driving. So we've just driven about 500 meters, and in that short space of time, um, I've got over 25 wireless access points, or routers, about half of those I could connect to because they're unencrypted. In Southern California, they've taken this to an even more extreme level with something called war flying. In just a 10 minute flight, they found over 3,000 wireless hotspots just sitting there, ready to be exploited. So what does this mean? Well, the more Tom, Dick and Sally's who secretly log onto your connection, the slower your internet gets. And the committed hacker will be just a few steps closer to your private files. But this hasn't dissuaded some benevolent souls, like me, for example, from leaving their Wi-Fi connections open on purpose. Homemade antennas can even boost the range of our hotspots, letting anyone log onto the net for free. Wi-Fi has thrown the rule book out of the window. We're used to paying big corporations for our internet access, but now there's a real, tangible alternative. It could change the entire face of online Britain. That's when you realise that wireless is more. We're heading for a fully automated future, but I've been seeing how gadgets can help around the home today. Time for the next challenge, fitness. Keeping fit in bed is obviously possible. However, there are a few labour-saving solutions that I'd like to test out first. Can I have a workout without literally moving a muscle? First up is Powerball, a 25-quid gyroscope that exerts a 40-pound pressure to strengthen your wrists. You ready? Here we go. OK, so you start it off. And at the moment, it just feels like I'm wiggling my hand, and that's probably what it looks like. Right, now you can hear it getting faster, listen. It's trying to pull, it feels like it's trying to pull out of my hand. And the muscles all the way along my arm and in my wrist are starting to, starting to ache. No, it's, <laughs> it's really starting to hurt. So, I reckon it's quite good actually. If, you, if you're a motorcyclist or a golfer or something like that, you need to have strong wrists. That's probably quite a good way of training it. Good, that hurts. Next, it's the 30 pounds ab belt, which exercises your muscles by electrical stimulation. This is the most we weird sensation. And you see that I'm twitching and jumping. <laughs> On the box, I've just read this. It says you can wear it under clothing. Oh, at, at home, at work, or anywhere. This can be your secret. I'm not being funny, but can you imagine being at work? Wearing this under your clothing like that and walking around twitching. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'd much rather go for a run any day. <laughs> this is just quite frankly painful. Ow! All that pain has made me feel hungry. Hello, I'd like to order some food, please. Which means gadgets now Sorry. face their ultimate challenge, Chicken. getting a delivery from my front door to my mouth. Yeah. Do you deliver? Excellent. First, I need a £70 spy cam as my lookout. It plugs straight into the telly. 
Next up, the £40 Blowbot, complete with PA system. Yeah, the money's under the mat. Can you just uh, leave the food with the robot, thanks? I don't think the stairs are going to defeat me. This £60 helium-filled blimp is pretty hard to control, unless you use the magic of TV, of course. But it's far cooler than using a stunner stairlift. The final leg is down to trusty old Robo Sapien. Thank you very much. And what's more, that means that gadgets have allowed me to spend the whole day in my bed, starving. You idiot, Bobo Sapien. This week, we're concentrating completely on these things, digital cameras, the fastest growing area of gadgets. So let me just get this straight. You've never even been in a light aircraft, let alone try to land one. No, I haven't. I've only ever 